train and I gotta go on to the next fantastic voyage into my father's brain. Have you seen my dad's brain around here? Your dad's theory is one of the most important discoveries of all time in science. I would put it right up there with Einstein's relativity theory, Newton's theory of gravity. There really are very large numbers of versions of you that really exist. Now you're blowing my mind. Good. Mark Oliver Everett, known to his friends as E, is the creative force behind the successful cult rock band Eels, who, over the last decade, have been earning critical kudos, a shelf load of music awards, and have even popped up on the soundtrack of the hit movie Shrek. There's nothing that I want to do More than get alone and be with you Trouble with dreams is they don't come true but what many of Mark's fans don't know is that his father, Hugh Everett, was a brilliant quantum mechanic. He developed the groundbreaking theory of parallel universes, a scientific theory that has seeped into the worlds of film, music and literature and is part of our everyday vocabulary. I don't remember knowing when he was alive that he was like a famous physicist. I, I don't know if I ever even knew that till after he died. Dad? Mom? Can you hear me? My dad, who was a devout atheist, of course, um, his uh, dying wish was to be thrown out in the trash. And uh, my mom kept his ashes in a filing cabinet in the dining room at our house for a few years and then eventually honored his wish and threw him in the trash. <laughs> That's the truth. Here's uh, my mom. This is the one. I haven't never seen it before. It was something she wanted me to take care of after she died. Oh, there's one for my sister, too. I've never seen that. Wait, where's, the, where's my father's stone? It's, I just don't get it. It's a mystery. Mark's father was a distracted genius lost in his own world. They lived in the same house for 20 years, yet they barely spoke. In fact, one of Mark's lingering memories of his father was a distressing day in July 1982. It was the weirdest thing because um, I walked in their bedroom and there he was laying there like sideways on the, on the bed, fully clothed with his tie on like he always had on. You know, I tried to wake him up. And when I put my arms under him and I picked him up, his body was completely stiff. And it was just so surreal because I was touching him, which is the only time I could remember having any physical contact with him. And... Yeah. And it was just also so, obviously it was, you know, very traumatic and a horrific scene, but it was also had the added surreal quality for me because, you know, my father had just died, but I, you know, I barely knew him. So it was hard to know how to feel like a normal person would feel in that situation. So I guess it's pretty sad that I had, you know, the one really intimate experience I had with him was while he was dead, you know. I don't leave the house much. I don't like being around people It's better for me to stay home Some might think it means I hate people But that's not quite right Mark fiercely guards his privacy but he's opening himself up to confront something that until now he's only been able to deal with in his lyrics 
it's been almost the exclusive way that I've dealt with my situation, writing a song about my family. He wants to find out why a scientist as outstanding as his father turned his back on academia's glittering prizes. I'm going to go on this trip because it's something that I knew was coming eventually. I didn't want to wait too long either, you know, with my family history, the uh, longevity rate there. <laughs> well, you have to have a sense of humor. You know, that came from my family. That, that was the way we communicated. Like, nobody said, I love you or anything like that. It was more, it was very kind of jokey, sarcastic family. And that was how we communicated, you know. Oh, what do we got here? Do, 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 do. This is Bobby's room, yeah. I mean, how many dogs get their own room? He's the most spoiled dog in Los Feliz. Maybe in the world. Understanding how his father came up with the concept of parallel universes is going to be tricky, because science was never Mark's strong point. I only have a very, very vague understanding of my father's theory. It gets up to a certain point, and it becomes like impenetrable. And then it gets into the scientist language, which is like, it's like a different alphabet yeah. they're using practically. Hugh Everett's theory was so original that it set him on a collision course with the most brilliant minds of the physics world. According to Mark's father, with every choice and decision we make, with every event in our life that could happen in more ways than one, universes branch off in different directions. Every time we make a decision, we divide into two different versions of ourselves. This is how parallel universes are born. Applying the theory to Mark, he splits in two at the very moment he decides to go on his trip. In another parallel universe, a version of himself stays at home in LA. While in this universe, Mark sets off. Blinking lights on the airplane wings Up above the trees Mark's father, Hugh Everett III, was born in 1930 on the east coast of America, the only child of a strict military family. But while other kids were busying themselves with marbles and skipping ropes, 12-year-old Hugh was penning fan letters to his idol, Albert Einstein. You set me on the ground once more again Like his father, Mark grew up in the stiflingly rigid confines of American suburbia, in Virginia, just outside Washington, D.C. Still living in the area is Don Reisler, physicist, work colleague and friend of his father's. Mark can only just remember Don from childhood and wants to ask him what his estranged father was really like. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hello, Mark. You dressed for me. Absolutely. Wow. Who could turn down this opportunity? I mean, how often does a rock star yeah, come to my house? See you. Hey, it's delightful years. to see you. My oh, goodness. How long's it been? Twenty-five, 25 years. Twenty-five years. Wow. You are now so old that you were the age I was when you last saw me. Really? Yeah. Wow. You guys are always doing the math. Always doing strange <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So, come yeah. in. Thanks. And uh, be comfortable. There's a bathroom there if you need. Fluids here. We can sit down. Great. When did you first meet my father? 